Hi, boys and girls. We are going to look at our writing lesson for the day. Today we are going to do our read aloud, um, A Bear in War. We're going to look at our read aloud. Remember yesterday <clears throat> we talked about the vocabulary from A Bear in War? So let's look again at our vocabulary words. We had the word slay, limped, brace, chores, lantern, piggyback, recruiting, Europe, and we saw this in social studies. Remember this, we should know what this one means now. Dugout, bombs, postcard, soldier, Volunteer, fountain pen, trenches, medic, splints, metal, hero, remember, and memory. So you guys were supposed to think about those words and see if you could figure out what any of them meant and how any of them would be related to each other or related to the story, <laughs> A Bear in War. Well, today we're going to talk about the perspective or the point of view of the story. Now, we'll learn more about point of view later on this year. But this story is told from the point of view of the teddy bear. That means that a teddy bear is the one telling the story. So everything that we hear or see in the story is the way that the teddy bear could hear or see it. <clears throat> so if you were writing a personal narrative, you would be writing it from the point of view of yourself. It would be what you hear, what you see, what you smell, <clears throat> all of the things that happen to you from your point of view. So this is a story that was based in history, which is something that happened in the past. So this is something we learn in social studies. We learn about history. We learn about things that happened a long time ago. Um, and this story puts together emotion and the passage of time. So remember in the passage of time, we talked about um, in our tree named Steve, <clears throat> we talked about the passage of time, how things changed over time. So this one actually goes even more into a passage of time. So we are going to listen to the story and then I will give you your assignment for the day. All right, and I want you to still remember to listen for those vocabulary words. By Stephanie Innes and Harry Andrulat, illustrated by Brian Danes. My favorite day began with a ride on a sleigh. A girl with warm blue eyes held me tight as her mother guided the horses through the snow. We were bundled in a thick buffalo blanket to keep out the cold. They were taking me to my new home in East Farnham, Quebec. When the girl spoke, her breath made puffs of white. My name is Aileen. What's yours? She whispered as we glided along. Teddy, I said. It's nice to meet you, Teddy. I'm sure we're going to be best friends. For the rest of the ride, I sat quietly as we passed ice-tipped trees and frozen fields. Finally, we reached a winding laneway that led to an old brick farmhouse. Aileen helped her mother put the sleigh in the barn and unhitch the horses. I noticed she limped and wore a metal brace on her left leg. Aileen took me inside her home. As we sat down near the wood-burning stove, she told me a secret. I can't walk, run, or jump like the other children, she said. I had a disease called polio. That's why I wear a brace on my leg. I told Aileen a secret. That makes no difference to me. Mother started supper and made us some hot milk to drink. A little something to warm your spirits, she said. Aileen's daddy and younger brother, Howard, came to meet me. He's kind of small, isn't he, said Howard. I puffed out my chest to try to look bigger. Daddy picked me up. Sometimes the smallest ones have the biggest hearts, he said. Daddy gave me back to Aileen. Best to teach him about chores. We all have to do our share. 
Chores were jobs we had to do. While mother cooked, Howard and daddy fetched wood for the stove. Aileen and I set the table. Once supper was ready, we all sat down together. Father said a quick prayer of thanks and the family ate. After supper, there were more chores. Aileen and I washed the dishes and Howard dried them. Then father lit a lantern and we followed him into the barn. Howard helped daddy milk the cow. Aileen and mother fed the horses hay and oats. The horses like sugar cubes too, whispered Aileen, but there are hardly any to buy since the war started. What's war? I asked. Aileen thought for a moment. It's when people from one country fight people from another country. I don't like war, I said. Me neither, said Aileen. Once the chores were done, we went back into the house. Mother sat in her rocking chair and crocheted a little red hat for me to wear to bed. Aileen and Howard played cards. I sat with Daddy while he read the Montreal Gazette newspaper. There were lots of stories about a great war. He seemed worried. Before long, Aileen and Howard started to yawn. Up to bed, said Mother. Can't have you falling asleep at church tomorrow. Daddy gave Aileen and me a piggyback ride upstairs. Mother heated some black metal triangles called irons. She wrapped them in newspapers and towels and put them in Aileen's bed to keep us warm. Aileen and I hopped under the covers. I had on my new red hat and Aileen had on a pink one. We folded our hands and Aileen said a prayer. Watch over mother, daddy, Howard, Teddy and me. Amen. Aileen was scared of the dark, so Daddy stayed a little longer to help us fall asleep. He told us a story about three bears and a young girl with golden hair. It was very funny. The next morning, Aileen, Howard, and I woke early. It was still dark. I was tired, but we had to gather eggs for breakfast. Although it was cold outside, I stayed snug in the pocket of Aileen's coat. Inside the chicken coop, Aileen and Howard reached under the hen's bellies and pulled out eggs. They put them in a basket. The eggs were still warm. Aileen pointed to one hen. She's a clucker, Aileen whispered. She'll peck you if you try and take her eggs. We'll leave her for Howard. I thought that was a good idea. After gathering the eggs, we fed the chickens boiled potato peels. We can't waste any food, Aileen explained. In the afternoon, we got ready for church. Aileen put on a dress and I wore a suit. We took the sleigh to town, passing stores with pictures hung in their windows. Those are recruiting posters, said Aileen. The Canadian Army wants more soldiers for the war. We reached the church and went inside. It seemed very empty. Where are all the people, I asked Aileen. Lots of daddies are fighting the war in a place called Europe across the ocean, Aileen explained. I'm glad daddy is home with us, I said. After church, we went home and made snowmen. Aileen and Howard pretended they were soldiers fighting in the war. We built a cave in the snow and pretended it was our dugout. We made large snowballs and pretended they were bombs. I didn't like that part of the game. One night, Daddy came into Aileen's room. I'm going to fight in the war, he said. But I don't want you to go, said Aileen. I know, I'd rather stay here too, but I feel it's my duty to help the other soldiers, said Daddy. They need help to win the war. I'm proud of you, Daddy, Aileen said, giving him a hug. After Daddy left, Aileen told me a secret. Teddy, I wish Daddy could stay home. In late spring, Daddy took a train to Valcartier near Quebec City. When he got there, he sent us postcards. Learning how to be a soldier made Daddy very tired. He had to go for long marches. He didn't get much to eat, just buttered bread. And at night, he had to share a tent with nine other men. I miss you every minute of the day, he wrote. We missed him, too. In June, Aileen took me on my first train ride to visit Daddy. Other children and their mothers were also on the train to Valcartier. Everyone brought picnic lunches and packages of stamps, soap, tea, candy, and socks for the soldiers. At the camp, we watched Daddy and the other soldiers ride on horseback. They looked very important in their uniforms. Daddy could do a lot of tricks on his horse. He jumped over fences and once picked up a handkerchief with his hand while riding. At the end of the day, Daddy walked us to the train station and we hugged goodbye. Keep safe, Aileen whispered to Daddy. We knew he would be leaving for Europe very soon. As the train pulled away, Daddy stood on the platform waving. Aileen held me up to the window and we waved back. I wish Daddy could come home with us, Teddy, Aileen said. I don't like the war. 
When we arrived home, mother gathered paper, a fountain pen, an inkwell, and a stack of stamps. Every night after supper, she wrote to daddy. Aileen and Howard wrote daddy letters too. They told daddy about school. Howard said he liked arithmetic and numbers best. Aileen said she skipped with the other girls and sometimes forgot about her brace. They said they were learning how Canada was helping England in the war. In the morning, mother walked Aileen, Howard and me to school. We would stop at the post office to check for letters from daddy. Some days we didn't get any. Other days we received four or five at a time. In one letter, daddy told mother he sailed to England on a big ship called the RMS Hesperian. Daddy said the ship was very nice inside, but that the waves made him feel sick. He even threw up while standing on guard. But it wasn't all bad. One day, Daddy saw a school of porpoises jumping out of the ocean. I wish I could have seen that. Daddy's boat landed in Portsmouth, England. I wish you had been with me, he wrote to us. The water was full of warships and the sailors cheered us all the way in. Daddy and the other soldiers took a train from Portsmouth to a place called Shorncliffe Camp. There were lots of soldiers living there waiting for their turn to go to the war. The countryside is beautiful, Daddy wrote. Hedges divide the fields, which come right down to the water. Everything is so neat and orderly. This is a very pretty place, but it is not home. Christmas came and Daddy was still overseas. Mother said he was fighting in the trenches in a country called Belgium. In his letters, he said he was cold and tired and missed us terribly. We need to send him something, Teddy, said Aileen. Something to remind him of home and to keep him safe. We thought for a long time. What should we send him? A book? A picture? Then finally, we both had the same idea. I would go to war. Howard helped Aileen make a little bed for me out of a cardboard box. To keep me warm, they stuck a pair of wool socks inside. They wrapped the package in brown paper and punched holes in the box so I could breathe. Then they took me to the post office. Please take care of yourself and Daddy, Aileen said. I'll do my best, I said. I traveled both by land and by sea. The journey was long and I lost track of time. Finally, someone tore open the box. It was Daddy. Teddy, he said, squeezing me tight and smiling. Daddy placed me in the front pocket of his army jacket and gave me a pat on the head. Well, my brave little bear, it's you and me now. Daddy was now a medic in France. He liked helping the injured soldiers. When the other soldiers seemed sad, Daddy cheered them up by telling them the war was almost over. Soon it would be time to go home. He put bandages on the soldiers' cuts and made splints for their broken bones. A lot of the time we sat in deep trenches. They were wet and cold and there were rats everywhere. But the trenches helped protect us from bullets and bombs. When a soldier got hurt, though, we would have to leave the trenches to help him. Sometimes we got hurt when a bomb exploded nearby. Sharp things would hit us. Our bravery was noticed and we were given the military medal. Daddy pinned the medal to my chest and I wore it proudly. Daddy and I thought about Mother Howard and Aileen all the time. On Christmas Eve, as we tried to stay dry and warm in the trenches, Daddy wrote a letter home. My stockings will be on my feet where they have been for the last seven days and where they will be for about 11 more. I will try and picture you and the kitties hanging yours up and will perhaps see Santa Claus coming by on his way to you all and with hope that the stockings will get filled. I continued to watch the war from daddy's front pocket. I saw him help lots of soldiers. That's what he was doing in the fall of 1917 at a battle called Passchendaele when many soldiers died. Daddy died that day too and I stayed in his pocket for a long, long time. When the fighting finally stopped, a Canadian soldier found me tucked safely inside Daddy's pocket. He sent me back to Canada with Daddy's uniform and medal. Aileen was very surprised and happy to see me when she opened the package. Teddy, you came back, Aileen said. I was sad because Daddy was not with me. Aileen said she, Howard, and Mother were very sad too. She told me I was brave and that Daddy had received other medals. That night, Aileen told me another secret. Daddy was a hero, she said. He helped the soldiers who were hurt. I hope people always remember. Daddy died many years ago, but I still try to keep his memory and the memories of the other fallen soldiers alive. My home now is a glass case inside the Canadian War Museum. Perhaps one day you can visit me. I'd be pleased to tell you my own secret, that I fought the war in the pocket of a hero.
Epilogue. A bear in war was inspired by the true story of Teddy, the stuffed bear that was sent to the front lines during World War I. Teddy belonged to 10-year-old Aileen Rogers, who lived with her family on a farm in East Farnham, Quebec. Her father, Lawrence Browning Rogers, enlisted in the 5th Canadian Mounted Rifles at the age of 37 in 1915. When Lawrence departed for training in Valcartier, Quebec, and then for the war, he left behind Aileen, seven-year-old Howard, and his wife, Janet May Weaver Rogers. Janet and Lawrence exchanged more than 200 letters during the two and a half years he was away. Aileen and Howard also wrote to Lawrence, and Aileen sent her beloved Teddy overseas to help protect him. However, it wasn't enough. On October 30th, 1917, Lieutenant Lawrence Browning Rogers died at the Battle of Passchendaele. In 2002, Lawrence's granddaughter, Roberta Rogers Innes, found Teddy, the letters, and other war memorabilia inside a large family briefcase. As she delved deeper, Roberta discovered how a Canadian family's strength was tested during the First World War and how a tiny stuffed bear became an enduring memento of their love. Teddy now sits in the Canadian War Museum in Ottawa, Canada. Okay, so that was our story, A Bear in War. So it taught us a little bit about um, World War One, and it was about... Um, this was a, a fiction book, but it was based on the sto real story of um, a girl that sent her teddy bear to war with her dad. So, in this story, it was from the point of view or the perspective of the teddy bear. So, that's why it's called A Bear in War. Um, the teddy bear actually went to war with the dad. And so we were able to see the things that the bear saw. So if you think about the story, it would be hard to write it from another perspective. From the perspective of the little girl, she, she couldn't tell you about the war other than what her dad told her. From the perspective of the dad, he wouldn't be able to share as much as about what was going on at home while he was gone. So the bear was able to share with you what happened at home and then what happened in during the war. So this is what your assignment is going to be today. In your writing journal, I want you to write a little story about your stuffed, your favorite stuffed toy. Um, first thing you're going to do is at the top of your page, I want you to draw a picture of your favorite stuffed toy. Um, and it could be that you have um, a favorite stuffed blanket. Um, it could be a teddy bear. It could be a dog. It could be um, a cat. Whatever kind of stuffed animal is your favorite. And then I want you to write about it. What does it look like? Why is it special? What kind of emotions do you feel? Does it make you feel happy? Does, is there something about it that makes you feel sad? Um, so you're going to write, tell everybody a little bit of something about your favorite stuffed animal. Use as much detail as you can. And you do not have to submit this, but we will, we will talk about it later during one of our conferences. And I also want you to think, and you don't have to put this in your writing, but we keep our stuffed animals a lot of times to bring us comfort. A lot of times it, we like to have our stuffed animals to make us happy when we are sad um, or just to make us feel comfortable, if, especially if like we're away from home. Would you have done what Aileen did and send your teddy bear overseas? Would you send your favorite stuffed animal with your dad overseas? So I just want you to think about that for a second and think about why or why not you would have done that. And so just make sure that your story is using all of our grammar rules. Make sure your, your sentences begin with capital letters and end with punctuation. Do check your spelling as, as, um, much as you can and 
make sure that you are using complete sentences in your writing.